Okay, right here, go ahead. Hello, good, good evening. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Woolman Zoning Board of Appeals. Mr. Syrenson, would you please call the roll? Sure. Mr. Falkoff. Oh, um, Mr. Falkoff, I think you might be muted. There we go. Um, can you hear me now? I'm here. Yes. Ms. Norick. Here. Mr. Peloton. Here. Mr. Sermon. Don't see. Mr. Uh, Chuck Urban. Here. And Chairman Snyder. Here. Uh, this meeting is being conducted remotely via Microsoft Teams. For those watching this video in the future, the state of Illinois is currently under the stay-at-home stay order issued by the government J.B. Pritzker due to the coronavirus global pandemic. As a result, all in-person governmental meetings have been canceled. However, the Open Meetings Act now permits electronic meetings of governmental bodies like the Zoning Board of Appeals. And this evening, we're conducting our business in complying, compliance with state law. As usual, this meeting is being broadcast live on our local cable access channel six. It is also being broadcast on the internet, on YouTube Live, and the URL for that is www.youtube.com slash user slash village of Wilmet slash live. To, par to participate in the meeting, you can join through Microsoft Teams. Visit the village's website at www.wilmet.com and find the calendar event for the zoning board meeting. There's a link for, your, for you to join the meeting. You will also find the meeting agenda and case reports under the calendar. Alternatively, you can view the meeting on channel six or on YouTube and call into the meeting, allowing you to listen and speak using your telephone. The phone number is 872-239-8225. 872-239-8225. Tonight's meeting code is 680-592-592. 126. You may also submit your comments through YouTube Live and emails to comdev at wilmet.com. A member of the village staff will read your comment to the zoning board. All comments to the zoning board of appeals will be recorded in the meeting minutes as we typically do. For our meeting guests joining by teams, when you are not speaking, please keep your device muted to minimize disruption of the proceedings and your video turned off so that the board members can be seen. For those of you new to our proceedings, the purpose of this board is to hear evidence on applications for variances from our zoning ordinance and on applications for special use. Based upon the evidence we hear this evening, we will make recommendations to the Village Board of Trustees as to whether the applications that come before us this evening should be granted or denied. We will vote to recommend granting or denying each application for variation based on whether the application meets the standards of review set forth in section 5.4.F of our village ordinance. Applications for special use will be considered based on whether the standards of review set forth in section 5.3.E of our village ordinances are met. The Village Board of Trustees will consider the recommendations we make this evening at their next regularly scheduled meeting on November 24th of this year. Our recommendations to the Board are, are advisory only. The Village Board has the final say on all applications and will make its own determination as to whether to grant or deny them. The Village Board is not legally bound by our recommendations. There is one small exception to this rule. If this board makes a negative recommendation with respect to an application, in order for the village board of trustees to approve that application, a supermajority of five village board members must vote to approve it rather than a simple majority of four. Um, there's also a requirement uh, concerning our board that we operate uh, on the basis that at least four members must uh, be affirmative to give a positive recommendation 
uh, so uh, we have now, I think we have six members present. So four of six members must uh, vote positively to, uh, to a recommendation. Um, ordinary, as I said before, the, this board consists of seven uh, members. Right now we have six. Uh, Ms. Roberts and Mr. Sarvinson uh, sit, on, uh, sit with us tonight in an advisory capacity only and, is not a voting, and are not voting members of the board. Um, so again, we need four, you, you will need four of six members today to approve a, uh, an application. Um, in recognition of this, this feature, the fact that we don't have a full board, when we, uh, we offer the applicant an opportunity uh, to request a continuance to the next available date on our schedule. The next available meeting, uh, available date for any applicant who would like to request a continuance this evening is November 18 of this year. There's no penalty for asking for a continuance. No such request will be held against you when your case is eventually heard. If you wish to ask for a continuance, however, you must do so at the beginning of your presentation before making any substantive arguments as to the merits of your case. Please also be aware that if you request a continuance, there's no guarantee as to how many board members will be present on the evening to which your case is continued. The cases we shall hear this evening will be heard in the order set forth on the published agenda. When your case is called, please state your name and address and tell us exactly why your application meets the standards of review that are applicable to it. Each member of this board is a longtime resident of the village and has visited your property during the past week. In addition, we have received from the village staff a report containing all written information that you have submitted in support of your application, as well as any other correspondence that the village has received. Accordingly, it is not necessary that you repeat what you have already stated in writing. Please just hit the high points and with particular attention to why you believe your application meets the standards of review. After the applicant, applicant has, made it, has had a chance to speak, we will open the floor to others who wish to speak on the application. I will recognize each attendee to ask if you have a comment, so please wait to be called. Everyone will be permitted to have their say, but we would ask that you keep your comments as short and to the point as possible. Any comments received through the YouTube chat, Teams chat, or email will be read into the record at this time. After we have heard all oral presentations, I will close the evidence and the members of the board will discuss what they have heard and take a vote. Once the evidence is closed, no further testimony on an application will may be offered. The only people entitled to speak during that part of the proceedings will be the members of the board. This meeting is a legal proceeding and all testimony tonight must be given under oath. If you are here and planning to testify tonight, I would ask you to raise your right hand at this time to be sworn in. I don't think I can see you, so I'm assuming you're all the people that want to testify tonight, uh, I assume you're raising your right hand, and I'm asking you, do you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth in the testimony that you're about to give? If so, please say, I do. I, I saw one I applicant. Is he? Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Reinhard, I, I don't believe the, uh, the other petitioner for Cluckers Chicken is in the meeting yet. Uh, okay. So when, when they get in, we might need to swear them in separately. Okay, okay, that's good. Thank you. So, Mr. Sarvison, will you please call the first case? Sure. Uh, case 2020 Z35 for 1215 Washington Avenue. The petitioner is Eric Olson. 
requesting a special use for a small medical clinic, which is React Physical Therapy. And this is for an expansion of an existing special use. They're currently located uh, in the building, just expanding into the adjacent space. And uh, Mr. Olson is, is here, if you would like to give a, a brief presentation. Thank you, thanks for having me. Um, First of all, uh, I'd just like to say we've certainly uh, had really great experience operating in Wilmette today. Uh, and the, real, the reason for the expansion is largely um, that we've been able to serve the community and we feel like we've been um, a really good fit uh, for the community. And in addition, um, our, we have five other uh, locations around Chicago. And those locations are actually uh, the size that Wilmette would be if we were to expand. And so we, we want to make that commitment to Wilmette to size this clinic the way that we normally would, such that uh, we can add um, things like private space uh, for patients that might request such things, and uh, also have a laundry on site and a number of other amenities we typically have. Um, we don't intend uh, to increase the number of physical therapists we have practicing at the clinic. Uh, we have three full-time physical therapists right now, and uh, our intention is to keep that and just give them the proper space that we would prefer them to have to operate on um, per how we operate our other five clinics. Um, and again, I just think you know we've, we've been uh, really happy to be part of the fabric of Wilmette and um, I think uh, if, you, if you take a look at any of the Google reviews and other things around, I think uh, we've, we've done certainly right by uh, the, the people of Wilmette and the adjacent town. So that's all from me. Any, any questions for the applicant? Mr. Olson, I was wondering if you could walk us through um, the expansion plans. I'm not sure I quite understood them. And I'm wondering, what space do you currently occupy, and what will you be um, adding on? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'll do my best. I'm not a real estate expert, but I will say we have the space we currently have in the building is not on the street frontage on Washington. It's the space that's sort of in the back, um, kind of adjacent to the alley. And uh, what we're trying to do is expand into the space that gives us the street frontage. Uh, which we typically do with our other clinics, right? So we can um, get some natural light, frankly, <laughs> in the space uh, for our patients and so forth, because all of our patients are coming in in pain, and um, we just want to create an environment that's uh, conducive to getting people better. And you know, frankly, light's a big part of that, and that kind of a more airy space. Um, the other piece we're trying to really get added is typically in a clinic for us, we have a private room for folks that would need that or want that um, privacy. So that's going to give us the ability to do that as well. Uh, in addition to typically at our other clinics, we have just more physical space, uh, which allows for better room to do exercises, right? So when you know patients need to go and, and do stretches or other things, we want to have ample room for those patients. I mean, particularly now, but in any case, we, we've always structured our clinics with a lot of open space for that. So we can do all the um, tests we need to do, whether it's getting somebody back to play on a sports field or just getting them back to day-to-day -day life. Hey, Lucas, could you put up the plan that's part of our packet? Sure. And, and I'd like to say I went by the property, but I um, didn't see anyone there, so I didn't... Uh, feel comfortable just coming in yeah uh this is the this is the main entrance to the to the building and uh the space back here i don't know if you can see my cursor but that's that's where they're they're currently located um, and this would be the new space where they would be going into so where's the laundry facility I don't think it's, I, I, I'm, again, I'm not an expert on uh, these plans, but I will say, like, it's not, I would say a facility, but we were just going to put a washer dryer in the space. Yeah, it's, so it's can, right, right here. Is that it, right there? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, what, yeah, one washer, one dryer. Yeah, it's just a washer dryer, so we can do our own stuff in, in the space. And the private room you were talking about? We're looking for that um, kind of more on the front of the plans area. Up, up here? Mm -hmm. That's right. 
And so the space that you'll occupy is all of the white space, not the hash marked areas. That's correct. Um, I, I have a question. Uh, I don't know if and Mr. Olson can confirm this or not. I did go by today, and I actually was a patient there when they occupied the hatched out space on the left upper left corner of the plans. This is their third, well, second expansion, but their third iteration, as I understand it. And um, um, when I was there, it was very rudimentary. And they, they really have, it's very professional. Um, and I know that that space has been, the space you're expanding into has been empty for some time. I think the, the gal who was there said for two years or more. Is that, can you confirm that? Uh, I can't confirm exactly the two-year number, but it had been vacant for a while, and um, we, were, we were just lucky that a project, I guess, had fallen through that gave us the ability to expand into it. So I have a quick question, just so I understand. The, 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 the top is the Washington uh, Street frontage, right? Yeah, the top of the drawing, that's correct. And, and the ha let me understand again, the hashed areas are, are separate tenants you are you don't occupy any of that hash area is that correct that's correct yes okay so those are separate tenants okay thank you the one in the upper left that i was referencing being in earlier is now a, a nail salon okay actually uh this is bob sermon i actually think the hash part on, on an architect hash part on the right looks like a common area. So that's that the way correct. You, so that's the way you access your space through the hash area on the right. It looks like you you know you have a new door up near the top, and you still maintain that door to the the, the uh, initial space. Yeah, that's correct. That's a shared hallway. Um, that's exactly right. Will your hours of operation change at all with the expansion? Uh, they will not. <clears throat> and then you mentioned that you'll continue with your three full-time physical therapists. You're going to be adding, though, a physical therapy aid? Uh, we, we do have one uh, PT aid right now, and we are planning to uh, add another, actually. <clears throat> um, that's, that was in the plans prior to expansion. So that gives you five people. Does, do they all show up at the same time or are they staggered throughout the day? We do stagger shifts, that's correct. Okay. Because I was there this morning early, uh, and I don't know what time you'll be there early or how early you'll start. I was there about 7.30, and I noticed that the parking was, it was good but still limited because you had all the people showing up for the um, sports yeah. fitness programs there that are early in the morning. Do you show up after they've had their rush, their morning rush? Uh, the sports fitness people, meaning the folks to our east? Uh, yeah, they are to the east, and they were also on the north side of the street. You know, they brought out all their equipment into the uh, open air for, I'm sure, COVID reasons. But uh, they, were, they were busy. They were very busy first thing in the morning. They are. I'll tell you that the um, generally the most requested appointment times that we get are, are pr typically pretty early. I mean, oftentimes we'll get uh, folks who would prefer to be in as early as 6 a.m. So oftentimes, like our busiest time will be about you know 6 a.m. to midday, and then we'll have some some pickup in the late afternoon. Okay. Um, but I think actually one other pertinent thing to add there actually is um, just the way we operate. So we. We spend uh, at least 30 minutes with a PT with a patient too, so we, that's not like um, some other facilities in the PT space where you, you might have three patients within a half an hour with one therapist. Um, we, we really kind of space people out and spend time with them. That's our differentiator in the market. Okay. So can you address how many patients you have at any one time? What the, say the maximum number of patients you would see at one time? Um, and then maybe how many patients you have throughout the day? 
Yeah, it's a good question. I think so. Maybe is it helpful to frame that maybe in terms of um, patients in any given hour that were open um, sure. for the first part of your question? So patients in terms of any kind of given hour that were open, um, if we have two therapists there coinciding at that time, you could see up to probably four to five patients perhaps in the space if we were fully booked. Um, which typically doesn't happen. I mean, we sit typically maybe more on the 70 to 80 percent sort of capacity uh, on, on most days. Um, and then in an average week um, that we are open, our target for a team of three PTs is about 150 patient visits um, that we should do in that week. And uh, again, we've been operating um, prior to COVID, we would have been operating more on like the 70 percent range of that 150 target. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for the applicant? This is in the village center, right? So there are no no parking requirements. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sarverson, have we heard from anyone else? Is anyone else that wish to speak on this application? Yeah. Let me see if there's anything in in chat. Uh, there is nothing in chat. Um, and Lisa, were you checking on uh, YouTube chat? Yes, there is no one on YouTube and uh, no email is coming. Okay, thanks. Thank you. That's not totally surprising. Um, can, can we uh, can we, can we have a motion then? Sure. sure I'll, this is Bob. I'll make a motion. I move to recommend granting a request for a special use for a small medical clinic, REACT Physical Therapy, in accordance with the plan submitted. The Zoning Board of Appeals will determine if the use runs with the land for the use and it runs with the use. I'll second that. Thank you. Right. Um, okay. Mr. Okay. Sermon. Uh, uh, it's uh, you know a minor request. Uh, I think it meets all the requirements. Uh, I'm glad to see the Wilmet business is growing. Um, even though it's not a well-traveled path right there, it's nice to see the storefronts uh, lit up again. So uh, I can support the project. Yeah, I would agree with Ms. Sermon that, um, you know, I, I think that having that empty storefront there for a long time, and I noticed that there's, uh, a, 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 it looks like half of their space, um, we would benefit from having a, 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 a business continue and thrive and grow, um, even though I, I don't think that growing substantially as part of their, their plan, but um, having enough space to, to do what they need to do. Um, and I, as I said, was in the much smaller space initially, and this was several years ago, um, when I was rehabbing from a knee injury, a knee replacement. And, um, you know, one of the things that we did was walk with bands around our, our ankles, right? and you walk from one end of the room to the other end of the room. And so I can see where if you have several patients, if you have three, four, five patients, and a couple of them have to do that, especially with the, the circumstances we're under right now, that you need more space for them to be able to move around um, safely without causing uh, contagion problems. So. Um, I think that it makes a lot of sense. It, it doesn't seem like it's going to be uh, an additional burden in terms of, of traffic, um, and so I can support it. Any other comments? I agree with everything that's been said, and I do think that Mr. Olson's done a good job of uh, demonstrating how his request meets the standards of review. He's been operating in the village, and. Um, I'm, I'm happy to support the expansion. I'm also happy to support the expansion. Given the workouts that I saw this morning over there, I think you'll probably have a lot of patients and <laughs> an expanding number of patients. 
I have nothing else to add. I too can support the proposal. The same here. I, I don't. Uh, everything's been said. I, there's not more I, I can add. So, if there's no other comments, can we go to a vote? Certainly. Mr. Falkoff? Yes. Ms. Dirk? Yes. Mr. Pelvin? Yes. Mr. Sermon? Yes. Ms. Joe Kerbin? Yes. And Chairman Slater? Yes. So this goes with a positive recommendation to the Board of Trustees. Uh, uh, they may just have this on the consent agenda, but you may have to be there. This, this case will be heard. Mr. Syverson. November 24th. 24th. Thank you. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. I move to authorize uh, the chairman to prepare the report and recommendation for the Zoning Board of Appeals for case number 2020-C-35. I'll second that. Okay. And you call them for a vote, uh, Mr. Syverson? Yes. Mr. Falkoff? Yes. Ms. Merrick? Yes. Mr. Pelton? Yes. Mr. Sermon? Yes. Ms. Chuck Urban? Yes. And Chairman Slater? Yes. Um, we can proceed to the next case. Uh, Mr. Syverson, can you please get uh, to the next case? Yes. I. Um, I did email the applicant to ask if they were having problems uh, connecting to the meeting, and they did say that they were uh, in the virtual waiting room, but uh, in my screen, I am not seeing uh, them as being in the waiting area. So I, I asked them to uh, disconnect and try reconnecting to see if that will work. So they are actually not uh, not on the call hmm. right so, now. Well, we'll, we will wait a bit and make sure that we can accommodate them. Uh, this is Bob. Sometimes, uh, as all of you know, I have difficulty connecting with my computers. And uh, recently somebody said, if you really have that trouble, try just using the app on your phone. So if this uh, person still has difficulty, you may want to suggest them, if they have the app on the phone, to utilize that. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, I might just try uh, meeting myself and just try calling them quick uh, to see if I can help to walk them, walk them through it. Bear with me, sorry. Just out of curiosity, while we're waiting, is this being televised and broadcast? I believe so. Okay. So don't make funny faces. Yeah, funny face contest. <laughs> I guess I can't eat any more Halloween candy then. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is we can only see you from the neck up, so if you put on a few pounds, we'll never notice. I guess we could shut your camera off for a minute when you take a bump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did, uh, did you all get trick-or-treaters this year, or was it pretty much canceled? It's kind of quiet, but we got them. Yeah, there were some. Mm -hmm. Well, Reinhardt knows where we live in uh, Kenworth Gardens. 
it's a major thoroughfare for kids looking for candy uh, just because the homes are so close together and the streets are double blocked. So we didn't have as many as normal, but we went through uh, a lot of candy. Hmm. It was pretty busy. Did you uh, take a little set up outside or did they come to the door? <clears throat> no, our, at least our block, what happened was everybody put out tables by the sidewalk and then sat at their front stoop. So you're what, maybe 30 feet away, 20 to 30 feet away, and just uh, basically monitored it. A lot of people brought out uh, fire pits and made sort of a party. Uh, it, was, it was very um, fun, and thank goodness for the weather. I would love to do that in the future if the weather would cooperate. We had a, uh, a tube on a tripod, so that it was a slide for the, the candy. And I kept trying to convince children that they had to put their mouth on the end of the tube and they would slide it right in. We, we had neighbors that set up a formal dining table on their front lawn and brought out a candelabra that Lurch and the Munsters would be uh -huh. proud of. Uh -huh. They had every candle going and they sat out there with a fire pit and they had munchies and whatnot as they, you know, gave treats out to the kids. It was pretty funny. People are so creative. They are, they are. Not, not at our house, but... <laughs> yes, Lucas is having trouble connecting. Could the applicant just phone in? I, I think he can. I don't think he has to be visible, but I'm not sure. Is that something I wanted to check with Lisa if she's still on? We've had a few that we just called in, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I don't think we can dictate to people if they don't have the ability. Okay, that's good. Okay, um, I was able to uh, get in contact with the applicant. He's going to try uh, using the call-in number. Um, so just kind of foregoing the, the app uh, altogether. So hopefully he's able to, to do that. So any, any minute now. This is Mr. Murdinger, yes? Correct. Who was it who said it was going to be a short meeting? Jim <laughs> Stitt. <laughs> what an idiot. You jinxed us. What? Oh. You jinxed us. <laughs> yes. Technical difficulties. It seems like we do have them every meeting. So what can you do? Have you had this particular issue where some, uh, the applicant was able to join? Well, but Bob no. often has trouble where he can't yeah. hear him or we can't see him. Yeah, I, actually, uh, I actually switched to a different computer. I switched really? to my own computer. I think my new computer had too much security stuff on it to allow it to work. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, Hello. yes. Yeah, Reed, uh, this Hi. is Lucas. Yep. Uh, Hi, you're, Lucas. You're on the call now. Uh, the, the zoning board is here, um, and before we can call your case, uh, we just need to do a, a quick swearing in uh, for you. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Murdinger. I, can you hear me? I certainly can, yes. Uh -huh. I, I need to swear you in. Uh, do you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth in the testimony that you're about to give? If so, please say, I do. I do. Thank you. Mr. Syverson, could you please call the case? Sure. Case uh, 2020-Z36 for 1515 Sheridan Road. The petitioner is Reed and Deborah Berdinger, and they're, they are requesting a special use for a limited service restaurant, uh, which is Clucker's Charcoal Chicken. And uh, this space was previously occupied by No Man's Pizza, uh, right there on the corner of uh, Sheridan Road. Um, so it's been vacant since uh, I believe 2017 is when the, uh, the last um, 
for Mays Lane was last in there. And Mr. Uh, Munger, if there's anything that you would like to add, uh, please go ahead. Um, well, first of all, I'm sorry I didn't get on the uh, call properly with this video, but um, good evening and, and um, thank you for letting us uh, apply for the uh, space over at Plaza de Lago. Um, we, we presently operate uh, two uh, restaurants called Cluckers Charcoal Chicken, uh, one in Highwood and one in Libertyville, my wife and I do. And we've been doing that f since 2008. Um, and uh, both very successful operations. Uh, we pride ourselves in quality. We do charcoal chicken. So uh, the two restaurants we have now are really full service restaurants with the uh, hope that the opportunity at Plaza del Lago will allow us to try a little bit different model, which is more of a pickup and to go uh, operation, a little bit limited menu than we have presently. And with today's crazy times, we thought this would be an appropriate time to try this, just because about 80% of our business now in both locations is pickup and delivery. So we're, our model really has been perfect for these kind of times. Um, you know, we we um, we have uh, our own delivery trucks, and um, they have chickens on top of them, so they're like moving billboards, and uh, we service both uh, all the North Shore areas, everywhere from Highwood up until Gurney from both restaurants, and uh, have a great following. And uh, we've been fortunate enough to be able to live through these tough times with uh, good, strong business, and uh, be able to keep our employees working and our customers uh, fed. Good. Thank you, Mr. Murdinger. I, I'm sure there's some questions uh, the board will have uh, for you. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Bob Sermon. Um, good evening. Um, I have a question. Is there, since you will have those two delivery trucks, uh, is there uh, the ability to have a dedicated parking space for your drivers or how's that going to work that's been discussed yeah, um, yeah actually the the, the built the uh landlords and i have talked about it and there's it's a, there's a big big shopping center as you know and uh they're aware of the trucks and they have no problem with parking them in the parking lot okay um the other question i have is uh there was a, a local resident that had an issue when uh, uh, sent uh we'd received the information they were concerned about the garbage area and uh that i, I believe all the all the uh containers would have lids and uh being in the in the restaurant industry a little bit i know that you're required to have a you know probably two quart container and the lid's got to be closed for health reasons so i imagine you'd comply with that yeah we do um we presently uh we have a uh, waste service with two different companies. The company that actually is in the uh, plaza is Advanced uh, Disposal, so we'll, we'll use their service. And presently in our restaurants, we have, depending on how time of year, between two to three pickups a week. Okay. Um, and uh, all our, all our uh, receptacles, and talking to the uh, landlord, be behind our restaurants where we could uh, have easy access to them and, and certainly uh, be able to close them. At sure. Time. And then do you have a deep fryer as well? I mean, we do. And um, we, we presently use uh, Darling at one location and uh, they, they put a, a grease receptacle in back of the restaurants for us to drop them off and they come and pump them up every month. Okay. Uh, and then I think the last question for right now I have is uh, uh, for other projects I've worked on, sometimes when there is a uh, issue with smoke, and I don't know how much smoke is from charcoal, that uh, you know, does that become? Are your other? I guess do your other locations have residences so close? And when you uh, 
when you leave your restaurant, it, is it really a strong odor from all the smoke? I know I've worked on barbecue restaurants and you would think right. that with smokers it would be a problem, but oftentimes it's not at all. So it's, well, it's, 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 it's a good, good question. Um, so our restaurant in Highwood backs up to a, an apartment complex um, and our restaurant in Libertyville backs up to a, a significant residential area. Um, but you know, you do get smoke because you're right, we're doing charcoal chicken, but the exhaust systems we have in this particular location are the highest quality and um, they'll be able to handle the smoke that comes up in them. So you'll be modifying the, the existing hood system they have there? No, actually, what's nice, what's nice about it, there are actually three different hoods. And okay. uh, there'll be one there'll be one separate hood for the, the rotisserie. I see. But that's a modification you're adding to accommodate your use. No, no, it's the same. It was, it was there before, actually. That particular hood was used for a pizza oven. We oh. put the rotisserie in there. I see. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So this is Brad. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Brad Falkoff. Um, we were given a copy of your um, layout or plan, and I'm just trying okay. to understand. In the front of the restaurant, is are we looking at some limited seating there in the front of the restaurant when you walk in the door? Let me just pull it out. And maybe Lucas is um, one four. So, so the the plan I sent you. Um, there was seating in the restaurant before. Uh, we're not going to have seating in the restaurant at all. So you are you're looking at we're looking at in the front of the restaurant where there's a kind of like a a rounded uh, was it register there? Those yeah. Are, those are count those are counters for just uh, registers for pickup. So you're going to be 100 percent uh, takeout and delivery. Correct. The only thing we'll have is seating outside. They provide a small patio for us out there, so we'll have seating outside in the in the, in the summertime in the spring. And assuming you get all your um, permits and everything else, when are you planning on opening? Well, what I understand is I go through this this particular board here, and then I've got to go through another board um, the 1st of December around the 4th um, and then after that we'll have to start doing some you know work in the restaurant I think maybe between two to three weeks afterwards so probably the first of the year oh okay there isn't there isn't a lot of work to do in the restaurant we're going to do um, most of the most of the equipment that's in there now and all the hood system and all the plumbing and electrical is all in place from the previous restaurant. Everything needs to be, you know, checked out, cleaned, which is, you know, normal. And then we'll do some painting in, in the restaurant, but very little uh, work needs to be done in it for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to comment? Hearing none, um, can uh, I, know, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if anybody else is on the line that wishes to comment on this application, Mr. Sarvis? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Teams chat and I do not see any questions or comments on Teams chat. And if I could ask Lisa Roberts if she sees anything on YouTube chat. No YouTube chat and no email. All right, thank you. So maybe we're ready uh, for a motion. I'll make the motion. I move to recommend granting a request for special use for a limited service restaurant, Clucker's Charcoal Chicken, at 1515 Sheridan Road in accordance with the plan submitted. Uh, the use will run with the use. I'll second that. Go ahead, Maria. Um, I'm delighted to see a space that's been empty for three years uh, be reopened under a new banner. 
Um, I am surprised that a, a restaurant is opening in uh, this pandemic time, but given that it's all carry out and that's basically what's required during the pandemic, um, I, I'm happy that uh, the times uh, suit the model that um, Clucker's Chicken is, is uh, following. I can support this. Thank you. I would uh, agree and, and, and fully support this. Um, I think there was a reason why the last restaurant did not do well there. And I don't think it had anything to do with the location or anything else. I think there was a, a problem with the, the food that was coming out. So I think this is a great addition to have a place like Cluck, because I can say that my wife independently this summer was up in Highwood and ended up at Cluckers for lunch and came back and raved about the place. And so she was surprised to hear that there was a chance that you guys might be in Wilmette and she was very excited. So I think this is a great addition. Great. That's great. Uh, thank you. Uh, I concur with my colleagues and uh, excited to, to give it a try. <laughs> I would say, you know, the fact that uh, it was a restaurant, um, that it is going to be yet another restaurant, that there's no indoor seating, uh, it, it seems like a no-brainer. So I can support it, certainly. And this is Chris. I, too, concur. Um, you know, glad to see, uh, you know, a business opening in Plaza del Lago. Good. I, uh, I agree also. It's great to have another... Uh, option among the many restaurants that we have now in Romat. Uh, so uh, I obviously can support it as well. Um, can, can we go and call the roll, Mr. Cyrus? Call for a vote, I should say. You're on mute. Mute. You're muted, yes. Mr. Cyrus. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Falkoff? Yes. Ms. Dorek? Yes. Mr. Tolson? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Ms. Chuck Gerber? Yes. And Sherman Schneider? Yes. So, Mr. Mertinger, this goes with a unanimous recommendation from, from, from the zoning board. <laughs> to the village board and uh, they will meet and consider this case on November 24th. Uh, if you may want to attend, uh, uh, they may have some questions for you, although I, my sense is I don't think there will be a lot of objections to this. Thank you, Mr. Great, thank you. And good luck. Thank you very much. Do, is this, is this uh, meeting on November 24th an in-person meeting or again on the, on, on the video, on internet? It will be uh, it'll be the same format. Okay, maybe we, you and I can talk, Lucas, how to get this a little better. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry for that. I'm, I'm sure it was I'm sure it was an issue on our end. No, I, I'd love I'd love to be able to you know to see the board and have them see me as well. And I, th and I thank you all for your consideration and your approval. My wife and I are excited about it. Got to be a little crazy to be opening a restaurant this time, as you all say, but. Um, I think it's the right fit for the right place, and um, this is a, a, a real test for us to see if this model works. And if it does, I think that's our future for growth through our operations. Thank you. We're, we're looking forward to it. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. I move to authorize the chairman to prepare the report and recommendation for the Zoning Board of Appeals for case number 2020-C-36. I'll second that. Okay. Let's call for the vote. Mr. Falkoff? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Dalton? Yes. Mr. Sterling? Yes. Mr. Joe Yes. And Sherman Schneider? Yes. Uh, now we come to the point where I we have to ask whether there's anyone out there that wishes to speak on any topic at all. And uh, Lucas and Lisa, can you let us know? 
There, there are no uh, comments or questions on Teams chat. And no other comments on YouTube chat or emails. Well, can I therefore move to adjourn? I'll second that. Okay, let's proceed to a vote, Mr. Sargentson. Mr. Falkoff? Yes. Ms. York? Yes. Mr. Falston? Yes. Mr. Serban? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Verbin? Yes. And Chairman Slater? Yes. And the meeting is adjourned.